or have you? No. We well, you're the first. We thought we'd give you first crack at it. Oh, uh, well, it's not going to be first crack <laughs> at it, but your, your relationship has been People magazine, then National Enquirized, and now NBCized. How do you maintain any kind of a relationship, a friendship, a professional relationship with the world looking at you all the time? It's, this fishbowl. It's tough. You answer no. that one, dear. No. <laughs> no. Uh, it doesn't bother us that much, really. Uh, we enjoy fans and people that, that uh, enjoy our music, and, and we're, pre we're appreciative. But what about when they want to know more than music? They want to know what you, where you go, and they want to take your pictures all the time. I mean, it's, not that it's a big intrusion on your lives, but really, as I say, you're in a fishbowl. Well, we've both been doing it, really, for so long. Tanya's been doing it, I don't know, what, uh, nine or ten years. She went out, Delta Dawn was a hit for you when she was 13. Mm -hmm. And she kind of grew up with it, and I did too, so it really, it really doesn't bother me, Tom. Well, you get the same thing, too, I imagine. But I don't get it in terms of the lady I'm with, whereas you do. Right. And when you're with the lady or when you're with a gentleman, you kind of want some kind of privacy. So, therefore, how do you keep privacy? How do you maintain that space for yourself that you want to have? We really haven't had that difficult of a time. Lately, it's, it's become more difficult. It seems as we go on, it gets more and more difficult to go somewhere and, and uh, sort of be, uh, how do you say it? Um, I mean, just be away from it, really. Where's the... Well, where nobody recognizes us, you know. It, it's now, since the beard and everything, before when he first grew the beard, nobody recognized him. I haven't seen you since then, <laughs> by the way. Why is it all the great guys from California, they never get gray, they never get pallor, they always have beards that are right. perfect. It's unbelievable. Uh, look at Reagan, he's 69, ain't got a gray hair. Right? <laughs> <laughs> to speak of, huh? Right. To speak of. <laughs> the, uh... Early years for you. You sang when you were eight years old. You started singing, maybe even before that. Huh? Oh yeah, I, I, I can always remember singing from the very beginning. Did you know you had a big voice when you were a little kid? That's what my dad kept telling me. <laughs> yeah, she sings good and she sings yeah. loud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the story, one day you went to a fellow and said, I can sing, and he had you do eight songs one night? Mel Tillis, who's a, Mel a good Tillis, friend of exactly. ours now. And well, he's always been a good friend of Glenn's, but uh, I went up to him and said, hey, I'm a, I'm a singer. I was about nine years old. And he was playing a county fair. It was before, right before he really had his big, his big records. And um, he said, well, can you, can, can you sing? <laughs> and I said, yeah. And so I went back and I, I sang a song. And he said, come on. I went on stage with him. And I, I, ever since, I've loved it. When did you become aware of Glenn Campbell? <laughs> I was probably about nine years old, eight or nine. What was the first time you ever saw him or heard a record of his? Is about this okay, that Glenn, to do this? I was about oh, that age. Because yeah. <laughs> I remember all the old tunes, uh, you know, the first hits by the time we get to Phoenix and, and um, Gentleman of Mine. And, and my sister really, we grew up singing together. And she sang a lot of his music. And I was into, um, of course, I loved Glenn and I loved his music and I grew up with it. But I was into the, you know, <laughs> the Elvis thing. And she sang Glenn songs. So it's kind of. You look back now, and I say it's really wild now to, that we're together now. It's really strange. It is weird. It's it's strange. We laugh about it all the time. <laughs> Who knew that we would end up where we are today and where we're going? Because really, singing with Tanya is just such a pleasure. She's got big ears, and I mean, does she hear <laughs> harmony? She does. I didn't well, see those. <laughs> I'm just a hole in it, Tom. <laughs> no, it's like it's like if, if if I just start singing a song, she can sing harmony with it. And her voices are so close, the range is, that the blend is just, it just knocks me out on stage. It's just such a pleasure. Well, he's really helped me with harmony, though. Harmony is very difficult. Not everybody can sing harmony. A lot of lead singers have trouble singing harmony. And he's really helped me with that a lot. He's one of the best. I mentioned that on your albums, uh, on one of them, he is the backup singer. Yeah. That's not new Expensive to you. Expensive backup singer. <laughs> yeah, you've done some backup singing before. There was the Glenn Campbell Good Time Hour right. and all those great things that happened. I wanted to do studio work, you know. I'd, I started saying harmony with Dean Martin on a lot of things. Uh, uh, the Beach Boys. Mm -hmm. Rick Nelson used to do the background. Uh, right after traveling, it's up, it's up to you, to you. And play guitar, you know, so you get it from both ends. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I make a lot of money doing studio work. When, it's incredible when, the records he's played on. It's, it just amazes me. When did you leave studio work? What was the first break that you had, you know, where you came out front and they said, this is Glenn Campbell, this is not a backup singer? Uh, well, I, actually, it was my New Year's resolution for 68. And a uh, uh, gentleman of mine had been out 
and by the time I get to Phoenix, it'd been out. But I didn't want to give up the studio work, you know. You want to make sure you got something here, you know. Like, it's like you leave in California, you know. You got something here, so you go there. And you, and you yes, you never leave step. one before you have the other. That's exactly. not a good idea, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, not, it's nice to jump, look over the cliff now before you take the leap, you know. But it, that was my New Year's resolution, not to do any more studio work, but just to work on Glenn Campbell. Remember when you worked on the Smothers Brothers uh, um, show? Yeah. Uh, and all that controversy was going on. And at the time, I remember, I didn't know you at the time, and you'd read that, you know, there were some people that were uncomfortable with the controversy that was part of the Smothers Brothers show. Were you one of those comfortable or uncomfortable? I was very comfortable in it. Uh, Tommy produced the show. In fact, that's how I knew that. Uh, Tommy saw me on the old Joy Bishop show. And I was doing Phoenix and uh, Gentle on My Mind. And, he and I'd, been, I'd done their albums. I'd done three albums with uh, Tommy and Dickie playing guitar on them. Mm -hmm. And he said, Campbell, I didn't know what you could sing. <laughs> and I said, well, you never asked me, you know. He said, can you talk? And I said, yes. He said, can you read cue cards? And I said, if there's not too many big words. And really, two weeks later, really virtually two or three weeks later, we started the Summer Brothers Smother Show. And boy, it was fun, I'll tell you. We had some writers, Tom. It's with Steve Martin, mm -hmm. Rob Reiner, McLean Stevenson, Mason Williams, John Hartford, uh, Jack Burns, Avery Schreiber. It was just incredible. George Yannick, Bob uh, Einstein. And it was just, all I had to do was go up and say, <laughs> now that you do that, the voice has come down a couple octaves, it seems, in the last ten years. It's getting more resonance in it. It really is. I'm starting to kind of like the way I sound now. Do you two work out together, I mean, with your, uh, you know, voices? Do you sing together a lot during the day? Do yeah, we do. We, we do quite a bit. In the car, you know. But we actually never work, I never work out the voice. It's just like anything else. Uh, uh, Really, people that vocalize and do that and do all those things. Uh, oh, we don't do exercises. There's a, nat there's a natural way to thing. sing without hurting your voice. <laughs> I mean, if you're taught to sing by mankind, then you would have to do all of that. But if you have a natural gift to sing, I've never vocalized or done anything before I went on stage. Before you do a concert or a performance, do you warm up at all? No. Some, nothing at all? The vocal cords are warm. They stayed about the same temperature all the time. Yeah, 98 <laughs> points. <laughs> <laughs> but I've talked to singers and they say, well, I have to spend an hour mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, stuff like no. that to get everything loosened up. No, huh? No. I think so. I never have. I think God just gave, gave a, a gift to sing and why mess with it? It's worked so far so good, you know. Are so good so far? No, <laughs> it's backwards. But it's, I just figure, why do it? Because I, I've learned to sing without straining my voice. It's like Tanya sings the same way I do. You push from here and you, you just, the pipes take care of the rest of it. I said that you have crossover albums out. I don't know what those are. Me either. <laughs> no, what, what does that mean, a crossover album? It means, uh, uh did I ask? Labels. No. Oh, my. I, think, I think it trans... <laughs> now you start. <laughs> I really don't know what it means either. I think it just basically uh, it tears down all those barriers that people bring up, that people build up between uh, country music, rock and roll, or easy listening, whatever. And I think those are the kind of barriers that Glenn and I don't care to have. I was raised basically with country music, and that's what I grew up listening to, um, with a little Elvis in there and every now and then. But um, as I grew older, I started opening my ears and, li and listening to different types of music. And if I want to go out and do a Nat King Cole song, or whatever, I, I feel like I should be able to do that without any limitations. And Glenn has had su unbelievable success doing that. Just across the board records. Everybody loves his records. I was going to say transcendent labels. Uh, well, almost everybody. <laughs> well, everybody does. <laughs> no, uh, like Rhinestone Cowboy. Uh, it's, it, it's across the board. Easy listening to M.O.R., country, pop, rock, or whatever you want to call it. I call my music a cross between country and rock. I call it croc for short. <laughs> 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 Southern Nights, uh, the same thing. Or Rhinestone, uh, Gentle, Phoenix. Uh, I think television did it for me more than anything. I don't think I would, I would be accepted as widely musically as I am, if, if it hadn't been for television. I mentioned that you two had done a special together on the Mississippi uh, uh, Queen, the river. Right, yeah. was, was that fun to do that? Oh, oh. it was great. It was How long incredible. a period of time were you on the boat to do that? What about? We were often on the boat. Yeah. From I, New Orleans to Natchez. We spent a week in New Orleans and on up to Natchez, Mississippi. And just left it raw, you know. I mean, uh -huh. The John mistakes, Hartford, everything. It was great. And Artie Johnson, Rita Coolidge. And it's a, it, was so, it was the most fun show I've ever done. Outside of yours, of course. Yes, I know. Well, you're going to do a little something for us tonight, huh? Yeah. Okay. We're going to do our best. Our, my new single. Our new single. Our new single. Okay. Her new single. All right. Her. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing.